Hey guys, what's up? Today we're trying something new for tip of the week. We're going to try this new little streaming setup, so hopefully you like it. Um, what this is going to allow us to do is to go inside of the logic projects that I'm working in, so we can go over anything you like, including composition, sound sources, synthesis, mixing, anything. Um, today, what I wanted to show you is a track called Jojo. And I named it Jojo after one of my favorite drummers named Jojo Meyer. And if you haven't ever heard of him, please check him out immediately. He's a super freak, amazing drummer. If you're looking for a place to start composing, a great place to start is with the drums. Since rhythm is one of the foundational elements of music, right? Rhythm, harmony, and melody. So for me, as a drummer, rhythm usually takes precedent, and I'm a little biased towards that being the most important. But try starting your next composition with the drums. Basically, um, the way I started this track was using probably the most famous drum and bass drum break ever, and it's called the Amen break. So if you've never heard of that, you can look up everything about it. I attached uh, the information in the description so you can look it up. Um, and you can find this drum break pretty much anywhere. You've probably heard it already a hundred times and not known about it. Um, but I decided to start my track with that and then just build around it. So I'll just solo it for you so you can hear it. And then from here, I went and added a bass line. Um, so let's just hear the drum break. Cool. I started with this and it reminded me of, of Jojo Meyer. So I wanted to write a bass line that was funky and rhythmic and had kind of a, a powerful sound. So I did that using one of the synths that's built into Logic called the ESM. And I think that stands for Electronic Synthesizer Mono. And the mono stands for monophonic, which means you can only play one note at a time. Um, the advantage of that is the sounds typically are best used for bass or lead sounds. And in this case, I designed a bass sound. So let's hear the bass and the drums together. Cool. This bass line could really be a melody if it was pitched up a couple octaves. It works because it's really rhythmic um, and I think you can listen to it on its own. So I also wanted to show you guys how just by changing the waveform it makes a huge impact on the sound. So in this synth, it's really simple. You really just have two choices. You have a sawtooth wave, which is over here on the left, and you have a square wave on the right. And so I'm assuming that in the center, it's sort of a blend between the two. Um, but I personally kind of like the pure wave. So let's hear the bass line just as a sawtooth. It sounds like this. Okay, so that's that wave just by itself. Same exact melody, didn't change any settings. Let's just switch to the square wave and notice the difference. Okay, I'm sure you can hear 
the difference in that sound and to me that's exciting um, it's a much more driving sound and that's what I want in the bass to propel this song and kind of meet up with the drums I also want to point out there's no EQ on this at all um, so all of those that difference in the timbre and the sound came from just the waveform itself I didn't EQ anything I did uh, I do have a compressor on but and compression can affect uh, how frequencies come out of the speakers for sure but the fundamental sound comes from this waveform and that's really what I wanted to point out um, so in the future we can go over you know kind of the difference between these waveforms and where you might use them or even just getting to know the sounds a little bit better so you have a better idea of where to start with these synths because I know when you open them up they can look really confusing but all synths use the same components and they're really all just doing the same thing um, some of the layouts in the plugins I think are a little bit weird and um, not very intuitive but once you know the main parameters it's really easy to start designing sounds on your own from scratch um, and that's another thing I want to talk about is getting away from using presets so I think when you first start in this world and you're, you're first starting to write music and especially now using a, a DAW uh, like Logic or Pro Tools or whatever you use um, with all these uh, amazing instruments and plugins now it's just so tempting to use presets and I think that is a huge mistake um, I think that you should learn the fundamentals of how these things work and then you can make some truly unique sounds that only you came up with and originality and uniqueness is still what matters in the world and I think you should try to go that route so yeah if you like any of this info if you want more in a certain area um, comment on the video and let me know um, I'm happy to really go into anything um, so y'all have a great one